newly elected PNP leader Mark Golden is working to unite the People's National Party by establishing a unity team. Sometimes healing is a process that can benefit from professional assistance. There are persons who are skilled at facilitating the kind of dialogue and discussion and openness that will help people to forgive, help people to repair and to heal. And we have entered on a reference already with a process towards that. And I'm very happy that Comrade Lisa has appointed three persons from her campaign team to the unity team. And I have appointed three to the unity team. And we have some professionals in team building and mediation. And they are meeting for the first time tomorrow to start the process of designing the Mr. Golden also gave an update about the Party Workers Fund. I had announced a fund for party workers yes. named after OT Fairchild. That is progressing. I have the draft trustees now. I'm reviewing it. I hope to finish that over the weekend. I will share it with the proposed trustees. And then once everything is settled, we will launch it. We'll open the bank account and we'll put first $15 million into the, into the fund to start the fund. In my office, I received some mail, and among the letters there was an envelope. And when I opened the envelope, there was a letter, and attached to the letter was a check. I didn't know the person who had written the letter, but she said to me in the letter that her brother was a long-standing comrade of the People's National Party, and she was sending a check for a hundred thousand dollars for the party work. Check was assigned, written up with the, the name of the P blank. Check was signed. She had that much faith in the process that she would send a, a blank check signed with an amount of money on it so it can go into the party workers fund. And I felt like, yes, the fact that somebody who I don't know would do that it was an inspiring feeling. And I really hope that many other comrades in Jamaica and abroad will support the fund so that we can really show our party workers, those who are most in need, those who have served longest. Mr. Golden is also mindful of the upcoming parish council elections. The two burning issues are the local government election, which, if the law is allowed to follow its course, will be sometime between December 1, essentially, and May, and sorry, February 28, a three month period. That's what the law provides for. And we must be ready. We don't know what the deal we are going to do, but we must be prepared. And I must tell you, that I'm very pleased to hear, Mayor and Comrade Fitz, Chairman, I'm very pleased to hear the level of preparation that is already underway. And the fact that you're having your regular meetings and you're doing your walks and so on, that's all as well for a good result. Mr. Golding also stated that he's not in support of Portmore becoming a parish. This whole question of the government's initiative to make or a separate parish from St. Catherine. Now, I have heard no convincing argument put forward so far as to why that is a good thing for the people either of Cornwall or of St. Catherine. The whole design of the local government system embodied in the 2015 three strategic laws and prior to that in the laws which created the Portmore municipality has been to recognize that Cornwall, which began as a dormitory community, as a residential area, had evolved into something worthy of being a municipality in its own right with its own mayor. But the whole question of becoming a parish is a separate bargain. There are legal consequences to having parish status. From a, even from a court's point of view, under the Resident Magistrates Act, there are certain offenses and civil claims that can only be bought in the parish where the where they wrong is committed. So unless you have a court structure within the parish for those claims to be adjudicated, there are legal issues which arise from that. There are also, most by convention,
section parishes would have certain assets which Portmore doesn't have because Portmore was never conceptualized as being a parish and it, it is integrated with St. Catherine and that works quite well. So what is the reason for this and what is the justification for this move? May I? I haven't heard it yet, so as far as I'm concerned, I don't think it's a good idea. I feel it, I think I, I can't buy into that and I, I don't support it. I, I Mr. Golden also stated that what we do know is that this is essentially a political line, which is going to take a whole lot of energy, a whole lot of time of drafting and of conceptualization, of resolving all of the little issues that will arise from creating a parish out of poor home. And to what end? Simply because the Jamaica Labour Party is of the view that it will give them a better chance of winning the St. Catherine Municipal Corporation. That is what that is about. And to my mind, that is not good policy. That is not statesmanship. That is not good governance. That is not in the best interest of Jamaica, which has so many problems tackling with now, with COVID, the public health crisis, the unemployment, the economy contracting, the tourism industry suffering, workers laid off, etc., etc., poverty increasing. And they want to be spending so much energy and time appointing a committee just to try and improve their political chances of winning one municipal corporation. Comrades, I don't feel it. I think I, I can't buy into that. And I Mr. Gordon was speaking at a meeting addressing councillors at East St. Catherine, St. Catherine. I'm Dudley Thompson for Roots FM News and also WDT Media TV. Feel free to like, share and subscribe and again thanks in advance.